You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I decided that I need to have more classic traditional recipes on my website and on my YouTube channel and my TV show. I mean, I've got a recipe out there for arancini. How many people search YouTube for arancini? <laughs> so I decided I need to do something classical, something traditional today. So I'm going to do beef stroganoff. I'm not going to do it the most classic way. You can get as complicated or as simple with beef stroganoff as you want to. My mom, her sauce for beef stroganoff was a can of cream of mushroom soup and a roughly equal amount of sour cream. And of course the beef and the noodles. <laughs> and we ate it as kids and we loved it. So you can get as, as I said, as complicated or as simple as you want. I'm going to get a little complicated today because when I cook for guests, I try to give them as enjoyable an experience as possible. You can use egg noodles, right? You can just buy the egg noodles that are available in the store. A one pound bag is plenty for four to six people. I'm going to make my own pasta from scratch. Everything else, I started off with a classic stroganoff recipe and I, I compared about eight or nine of them. I made up a spreadsheet in my computer and I looked at what all the different cooks were using. Tyler Florence, Tyler Florence, I'm willing to bet you, doesn't like sour cream because everybody else uses cup, cup and a half. He uses two tablespoons. <laughs> I don't think he likes sour cream. Anyways, I compared what everybody did and I tried to select what I thought from all of these recipes would make a really good beef stroganoff. And I even added a couple of little elements of my own that none of the others use. So I'm gonna make a fairly complicated one, but you can make it simple as well. So first thing I wanna do though, is I wanna make my pasta from scratch because that's what I enjoy doing. So let's get into making the pasta. I'm going to use a couple of eggs here. These are large eggs. Two is enough for four people for a dish like this. And then I want to put a pinch of salt in there. You salt the dough when you're making fresh pasta because Fresh pasta cooks in a minute or two. It's not going to absorb any water, whereas when you're using dry pasta, you salt the water. There's no salt in the pasta itself because the, the dry pasta will absorb a lot of water in the cooking. That's what you're doing is you're rehydrating that dry pasta. So by cooking it in salted water, the dry pasta will absorb salted water and that'll give it its saltiness. I have a little bit more than a half a cup of each. This is my durum wheat semolina which is a pasta flour and this is just regular all-purpose flour. So I'm going to put this in a little at a time. Roughly equal parts. It's difficult to say exactly how much flour you should use because it all depends upon how big your eggs are. If you're using smaller eggs, like say medium size eggs, less flour. Large, extra large eggs, rather jumbo eggs, you're gonna be using more flour. I use large eggs. And for that, for each egg, I figure a total of just over half a cup of both flours. That's 80 to 90 grams. And then if you want to, you can put in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil teaspoon or two. That'll give you a little bit more of a creamy, smoother pasta. And what you want to do is bring this up to, I'm going to put all of this in there. Bring this up to a dough that's dry enough to knead. And I'm doing this in a bowl. I know the traditional way to make pasta is you put your flour on the counter 
And then you make a little well in the middle and break the eggs into it. I do it in a bowl because I find it's easier to clean up. I can just move the bowl to the sink, put some water in it, let it soak. Then wash it. Okay, there's my dough. I pretty much used all of my flour there. Put that in the sink. And then you want to knead this until it's smooth. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this now in plastic and let this sit for a while. By letting this sit, the flour absorbs moisture. It'll be easier to work with later on. It won't crack so much when you're, I'm rolling it through the machine. So that's ready. Next I need to dice an onion. If you've seen my other videos, TV shows, you know I have my own way of dicing onions. A safer way, I think, than the chefs do on TV. I'm not going to use all of this onion because it's a little bit more than I need. You need one medium-sized onion, which is about 8 ounces, 225 grams. So I'm even pulling off the outer layer of onion there because I just don't care how much I waste if I waste a little bit because this is a little bit too much onion. This is a large onion. I probably have about 11 ounces of onions here. 11, 12 ounces. Okay. And then, what I do is I quarter them again and then cut down through one time, cut down through, I'm not cutting all the way through, just part way through. Then I can dice that onion without having to worry about cutting my finger. So I have this whole onion to do here. And as I said, I'm not going to be using all of this. Maybe three quarters of this onion is all I really need. One of my own variations is I have this last bit of shallot that I want to use up because it is getting kind of old. So I'm going to slice this up and add this to my onion. None of the recipes I saw made any use of shallot. But like I said, I've got it. I might as well use it because it's getting kind of old. I've got a skillet heating on the stove here into which I'm going to put a few tablespoons of pure olive oil. That's just regular cooking olive oil, not extra virgin. Save the extra virgin for flavoring. Then I'm going to put in a few tablespoons of butter and then put my onions and my shallots in there. And I want to cook these until they are slightly golden or a medium golden in color. I'm not going to totally caramelize these, but lightly golden in color, maybe eight to 10 minutes while my onions are sauteing. I'm going to slice my mushrooms. These are regular little creminis. Nothing too fancy. Mushrooms actually are not a part of the original classic Russian beef stroganoff. But everybody has been using mushrooms so much in this recipe in recent years that it's become just considered the classic now part of the recipe. You can use creminis. One of these, one of the recipes I saw said to use portobello, which always makes me laugh because what happens with creminis when they grow up and become big, 
they become criminos, big brown mushrooms. And farmers used to throw them away because people wouldn't buy them. So they had to come up with a way of making people want to buy these big brown mushrooms. So they gave it a fancy name, Portobello. It's just a large cremini. That's all it is, and you pay more for it because it's brown and got a fancy name. Just buy the little white button mushrooms, the creminis. I mean, if you want to, you can use shiitake mushrooms. Those are fantastic mushrooms. I love shiitakes. I thought about using them in this recipe, but then I decided, no, nah, the little round white mushrooms will be good enough. As soon as my onions are done sauteing, I'll saute these next. Actually, I'm going to reverse what I just said. I am not going to saute my mushrooms next. I'm going to cook the meat. And the reason why I'm doing the mushrooms last is because mushrooms are like little sponges. They will absorb flavors from the pan. So I'm going to do those last of all. After I've cooked the onions, the shallot, and the meat. As far as what meat to buy, you need about a pound, which is 454 grams, to feed four people. Figure four ounces per person. A little over 100 grams per person. And I'm using sirloin here because I just felt like buying a nice quality meat. You can use the stew meat if you want. If you really feel like you want to give your guests a high quality meat, buy tenderloin, New York strip, chuck steak, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm buying, I bought the sirloin because I just thought, ah, a really a decent cut of meat. It's not the best cut of meat, but a decent cut of meat would be good in this. So I have to finish slicing all of this up, and then I can get this into the pan as soon as those onions are done sauteing. So there are my onions. I'm going to turn the heat off. You can see those are lightly brown. They're not fully caramelized, but they're a nice golden color. I did turn the heat down as these started to brown because once the moisture cooks off, they start to brown very quickly. So I need to transfer these to a bowl and then I can start cooking my beef. One thing I didn't show was at the end of the cooking time on those onions, as they neared the end of the cooking time, I added a couple of cloves of minced garlic and cooked that for an additional minute before I turned the heat off under the onions. I've got my pan reheating again. I'm going to put my beef in there. And I'm only going to cook this beef for a few minutes. I want it to still be slightly, maybe more than slightly, quite a bit pink. I don't want to cook it all the way through because it'll start getting tough, but I obviously don't want it raw. So I'm going to be very careful about cooking this so that it'll be tender in my beef stroganoff. So there's my beef. I just turned the heat off under this. You can see it's still pink in places, but it's obviously not raw. And if you can hear that background noise, that's a plane going overhead. Yes, I live near the airport. So I'm going to transfer this now to a bowl, set this aside. I'm going to leave my juice in the pan because my mushrooms will absorb that juice. There was quite a bit of juice in this pan, so I decided to reduce that liquid, overheat. And now I'm going to add some more butter to that pan again for the sake of the mushrooms. And now I'm going to put my mushrooms in there. And just saute these until they're tender. If that pan goes dry, I have olive oil here on the side. I can add a little bit of oil to that pan. 
and I'm going to cook these for, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes over medium heat. My mushrooms are looking nice and tender here. I did add more oil to the pan. That's why you see more liquid in there because mushrooms are like sponges. They absorb everything very quickly. So I'm going to turn my heat off on that. One ingredient I need for this recipe is beef stock, which I don't have. I rarely ever have it. But one thing I do have, almost always have, in my freezer is chicken stock. This is all chicken stock. Let me tell you about that. Yesterday, I made a lot of chicken stock. I have 33 cups in there in the freezer. What I do is I freeze them in these one cup plastic containers, then I'll pop them out of the containers, put them in Ziploc bags, and then I have chicken stock pre-measured into one cup measurements whenever I need for my recipe. So I'm going to show you how I make a, a mock beef stock for this recipe. It's a little trick that I do. So here's my trick. I heat up that one cup of stock that was frozen. This is my concentrated chicken stock. I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but that's steaming pretty well. And this is that better than bullion, beef bullion. I put maybe a teaspoon in there. And while that's hot, stir that in and dissolve that in. And this will become my beef stock. I really like the flavor of this when I need beef stock. This works very well. This also has a lot of salt in it, so you'll notice that so far I haven't used any salt in my recipe. I'll be adjusting for salt toward the end. So there is my beef stock. I'm ready to start making my sauce now here. Give my stock a final stir. So that's about one cup, 454 no, 240 milliliters of beef stock to which I'm going to add two tablespoons. This is two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm getting this in there before this stock starts to boil so I can get this stirred in and reduce my lumps. Okay, that looks pretty good. Got pretty near all of the lumps out before that liquid came up to the boil. Now I'm going to add about a tablespoon maybe of lemon juice. This is lemon juice from a lemon from my neighbor's tree. She says, come over and take lemons whenever you want. So I do. Even when she's not home, I can take lemons off of her lemon tree. And then I want to put a little squirt, maybe a teaspoon or two of Dijon mustard in there. That should be enough. These are all extra ingredients to give it more flavor. What I see in a lot of recipes is tomatoes or tomato paste. So I have here about a tablespoon of tomato paste that I'm going to work into this. A couple of tablespoons maybe of dry sherry. Along with the leaves from three sprigs of fresh thyme. I think thyme is a flavor that just goes so well with beef. And then finally what I'm going to do, this is, I didn't see this in any other recipe, I'm going to add a little bit, maybe half a teaspoon or yeah, maybe half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. I'm curious to see what that smoky flavor is going to do for my stroganoff. I'm going to reduce my heat a little bit now. And I'm going to cook this for, I don't know, two or three minutes just to get this liquid reduced down to maybe half of this liquid, half the volume, before I add my sour cream and then return the 
beef, onions, and mushrooms to the pan. So that's had a chance now to thicken quite a bit. I mean, you can see it's not a paste, but it's not a liquid so much anymore either. That's a nice thickness. So I'm going to grind some black pepper into there. Stir that in. And then I have here one cup of sour cream that I'm going to blend in. This is cold from the refrigerator, so that's going to really bring that heat down. And I'll need to bring this back up to the heat. You don't want to boil the sour cream. I'm going to raise my heat up to medium. I've been thickening that sauce over medium low. If you boil the sour cream, it could break up on you. Oh goodness, that is looking so good already. Oh, and that doesn't even have the beef in it yet. Okay, so I'm going to let this get warm, pretty near to hot. And I don't have to get this serving temperature just yet, because I have to cook my pasta yet. And I can heat this up as my pasta is cooking so that it'll be ready to serve. In the meantime, what I do want to do is I want to get out my infamous red-handled tasting spoon. A little bit more. Because this goes in my mouth, not the pan. Just as I thought, that needs salt. So I'm going to put a good pinch of salt in there. And then see how that tastes. <laughs> that is ideal. All right. The last step now is to get my mushrooms in there and any juice that it is in the bottom of the bowl of mushrooms. My onions. And then finally my beef. Get this all stirred together. Oh goodness, that is looking wonderful. This is a far cry from my mom's beef stroganoff with her can of cream of mushroom soup and sour cream. As I said, you can make this as complex or as simple as you want. I wanted to make a nice, rich, complex beef stroganoff today. One more taste. Let's see, I'm going to get a, just a piece of beef in my bowl and some of my sauce. I know what the mushrooms are going to taste like in the onion. <laughs> oh, that is incredibly good. Turn my heat off and set this aside. I can reheat this when I'm cooking my pasta. I decided I wanted a green vegetable to eat with this. So I'm going to saute some Brussels sprouts because I love Brussels sprouts, especially if they're sauteed well in olive oil and butter. And I like to even garnish them with a little bit of Romano cheese at the table. All right, so I just turned my heat off from under these. Look how those are nicely cooked. They're browned, they're tender. I'm gonna put these in a bowl and set these aside. I can reheat these in the microwave if I need to.
this leaf came loose. Let's see how tender it is. Yeah, see, that's perfect. I'm ready to start rolling my pasta here. And I think what I'm going to do is cut this in half and do each piece separately. This has a wonderful texture to it. See, if you let it sit for a while, it just gets nicely pliable. All right, set this down to number one. And just start running it through. Get my knife out. Okay, like so. And what I'm going to do here, let me just set these down temporarily and dust these. I don't have a wide noodle cutter. You know, I took off my attachment for the fettuccine and the small noodle. So to make wide noodles, I'm going to cut these kind of wide this way. And those are going to be my wide noodles. Okay, in the meantime, I have water heating on the stove to boil my pasta. If you're using the store-bought dry pasta, egg noodles, whatever you're buying, you could use fettuccine for this as well. The egg noodles are the most traditional. Just cook them according to the package directions. My water is boiling here, so I'm going to bring the heat back up under my stroganoff. Put my noodles in there. These cook literally for only like one minute. I'm going to use a pair of chopsticks to just separate these up. As soon as that comes up to a boil, I'm going to boil them for one minute. I have a colander in the sink, drain them, return them back to the pan, and then butter them well because stroganoff is typically served over buttered noodles. How I would plate this, stir those again to make sure there's plenty of butter, coating them. A little bit more. Oh, beautiful. Homemade. Pasta noodles. And then some of my delicious <laughs> Oh, doesn't that look fantastic? There it is. Beef stroganoff. I have my Brussels sprouts on the side ready. The last step is to see how good this tastes. <laughs> okay, I gotta tell you, I had to put a lid on that pan so I just to stop myself from wanting to nibble at the pan because the sauce with the meat and the mushrooms looked so good. Oh, that looks wonderful. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my goodness. It's so good. <laughs> okay. So there it is. I'm going to go enjoy a late lunch. This is my beef stroganoff. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step by step photographs, Visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.